okay guys so uh, we are now going to move forward and now what we are going to discuss is about the manufacturer or dealer lesser now let me just explain to you people this is specific concept that what exactly is the concept of manufacturer or dealer lessor uh, before I go on to discuss this manufacturer dealer lessor let me just guide you something basically what happens is that a lot of products that could be car that could be house that could be laptops that could be mobile phones etc etc a lot of things are of such nature that the users they don't prefer to purchase them outright like you would not go on and you would purchase let's say a hundred thousand dollar car outright you would say that if I want to purchase this hundred thousand dollar car I want to purchase this car on installment you won't buy a house outright you want at times a lot of people they don't even buy a laptop outright they would be like that okay we are okay in paying uh, $250 a month or $200 a month or $100 a month we are not willing to pay uh, let's say uh, $1500 for a mobile phone we are okay in paying uh, $100 a month that's how we are gonna buy this mobile phone over a one and a half year or two year so a lot of people they don't buy things outright and what they rather prefer is that to buy the things on installment so basically if you think from the perspective of many companies if they don't sell on installment basis they might end up losing a substantial amount of their sales like even I can give you an example of Apple you would see the Apple phones are being sold through different operators on installments you you have got a telephone connection of XYZ company so your mobile phone company their company is going to provide you a package and that package is going to be that if you want to get iPhones iPhone 14 if you want to get iPhone 13 if you want to get this if you want to get that so what is going to happen is that that is going to be included in your plan so resultingly uh, many things are being sold by the manufacturer in the form of installments the manufacturer knows that my people the people my, my customers are not gonna buy it outright I need to sell it to them on installment basis so when we talk about the concept of this manufacturer dealer lesser what is this manufacturer or dealer lesser so the name is self-explanatory somebody who is manufacturing a product somebody who is acting as a dealer for a product I repeat somebody who is manufacturing a product or somebody who is acting as a dealer for the product that person might not sell it outright but rather sell it in a lease in an installment basis so such a person is gonna be considered as manufacturer or dealer lesser such a person is gonna be considered as manufacturer dealer lesser now so this manufacturer dealer lesser what he or she is gonna do is that they're gonna say lease receivable debit but correspondingly they are going to recognize the sales correspondingly they are gonna recognize the sales I repeat why because these people are there to sell the product they have sold it on lease they have sold it on installments but they are there to actually sell the product so if you are a manufacturer or dealer lesser and if you are giving the product to the customers it is likely it is highly likely in fact most likely it is going to be a finance lease why because ultimately the ownership is gonna get transferred in the name of the customer so if you are somebody who is manufacturing a product and you are selling that product to the customer on an installment basis so that's a sort of an installment sale and when you have got an installment sale so what you do is that you say lease receivable debit and correspondingly sale credit you don't say non-current asset credit you say sale credit and there is another accounting journal that you recognize and what is that you say the cost of goods sold are being debited and correspondingly inventories are being credited the cost of goods sold are being debited and the inventories are being credited so when we talk about the manufacturer or dealer lesser what is a manufacturer dealer lesser somebody who manufactures the product or somebody who acts as a dealer 
and is selling those products on the lease basis. So such a person is going to recognize a lease receivable and correspondingly they are going to recognize a sale. Similarly, they are going to recognize cost of goods sold that COGS is going to be debited and correspondingly the inventory is going to be credited. Now, so as per the requirements of IFRS 16, at what amount, at what price are we going to recognize this lease receivables and sales and at what price should we recognize the COGS? So let's just try to see. It says revenue shall be recognized at the lower of fair value of underlying asset or present value of lease payment. Now, there are a few more things which I want to explain regarding this. But first of all, let's try to understand. It's a fair value of underlying asset. So let's say if the fair value of underlying asset is $1,000 and the present value of lease payment is $950. So you're going to recognize the revenue at $950. You're going to recognize the revenue at $950. Why? Because you got to recognize at the lower amount. I repeat, you got to recognize at the lower amount. It has to be lower of fair value of underlying asset or the present value of lease payment. That is what you have to do. Now, let's move a bit forward. Let's discuss further. Now, there is one more thing which you need to understand with respect to this present value. Obviously, when we are going to calculate the present value of lease payment, one thing that I want you to understand is, let's say, if you have got $100 in one year time, and if you discount it using 10%, so you would actually get 91 approximate. But if you are going to discount it at 20%, you would get less than 91, maybe 84, maybe 83, something like that. So there is something that I want to tell you, which is basically if the discount rate increases, present value goes down. If the discount rate increases, present value goes down. It's an inverse relationship. So the discount rate, the discount rate and the present value have got the inverse relationship. If the discount rate increases, present value decreases. If the discount rate decreases, present value increases. That's how it is. Now, <clears throat> now what I want you people to understand is see, at times the lesser, what they would do is that they would actually quote a low rate. So when you quote a low rate, the present value increases. And when the present value increases, the revenue also increases. So like as a lesser, I might say that if I'm selling it on the lease, I'm only charging 3%, although I'm actually charging 10%. Because I know this thing that if this amount is discounted at 3%, the present value would be high and my revenue would also be high. So IFRS basically tries to control the lesser for manipulating the financial over here. And what actually happens is that in accordance with the IFRS, what happens is that the discount rate shall be higher off. The discount rate shall be higher off. Market rate or quoted rate. So for example, if the market rate is 12% and the quoted rate is 3%, you're going to use 12% to discount. I mean, you're going to use 12% to discount. So the discount rate is the quoted rate is 12%, uh, 3% and the market rate is 12%, you will discount the cash flows using 12%, not 3%. So I repeat, as a manufacturer dealer lesser, what are you going to do? You're going to say lease receivable debit and sales credit. At what value? It is going to be at the lower of, at the lower of the fair value or the present value of lease payment. What is the discount rate to be used for this lease payment? The discount rate to be used for lease payment is going to be the lower of the market rate or the, uh, it's going to be the higher of market rate or quoted rate. Now, let's move a bit forward and let's discuss further what's the next aspect to it. The next aspect to it is that
The next aspect to it is that you have to recognize the amount and the cost of goods sold also. So how much are you going to do? It says the cost of sales uh, is going to be the carrying amount of the asset less the present value of unguaranteed residual value. So whatever the net book value of the inventory, let's say 1000, the present value of unguaranteed residual value, let's say 150. So what are you going to do? You're going to say 850 is the amount that needs to be removed from the financial statements as a cost charge to the PNL for the inventory. The remaining 150 would remain in the books. Why? Because there is some portion of the residual value which is going to accrue back to us. How are we going to do it? Let's try to see it through an example. Let's try to see it through an example. It says a manufacturer dealer lesser leases out equipment under a 10 year finance lease. 10 year finance lease. Equipment costs 32. So the cost of the equipment is 32. That means in the balance sheet, the equipment is being shown at 32 to manufacture. The normal selling price of lease asset is 42 million. So this is the fair value. And the present value of lease payment is 38 million. This is the lower amount. So this needs to be considered. The present value of unguaranteed residual value at the end of lease is 2.2 million. Now, how exactly are you going to do all of this? You are simply going to say, lease receivable debited by 38, sales are going to be created by 38. What are you going to do? You are going to say lease receivable debit by 38, sales are going to be created by 38. And with respect to cost of goods sold, you would say cost of goods sold debit, inventory credit. At what value it is going to be? It is going to be 32 minus 2.2. 32 minus 2.2, so this is actually going to be 29.8. Thirty two minus two point two is going to be twenty nine point eight. How much is it going to be? Twenty nine point eight. So basically, this is how you are actually going to recognize it. In fact, for the lease receivable, the 2.2 million, the present value of unguaranteed residual value would also be included. Now, let's move a bit forward and let's discuss further. 